The Vantage Highway fire has a community under a warning. A level two evacuation notice, meaning be ready to leave quickly. Fox 13 has been on the ground since yesterday when this fire initially exploded in size. At this hour, it is now 8,000 acres. And one big concern is that strong wind. Fire conditions are perfect. It's dry, it's warm, and again, it's windy, which is fire crews spending extra time dropping water from the sky. Thank you for joining us for the News at 4. I'm Hannah Kim. We have team coverage for you on this serious situation in Kittitas County. Our weather team, Aaron Mayofsky and Chief Meteorologist Lisa Viegas, are tracking conditions in the studio for us. But first, we head out to Matthew Smith, who is live near the Columbia River, overlooking that Vantage Highway fire. So, Matt, there are a lot of people, including homeowners, worried right now. Of course, because anytime you see that smoke and you're close to the river, you're kind of trapped in, right? There's only so many directions that you can go depending on where the wind comes from. The good news right now is that this is on the opposite side of the river from the community on my side of the river here. So the fire that you see that's billowing off all this smoke, which has really just tripled in the past 15 to 20 minutes while I've been standing here in Quincy. Well, it is a little bit further away from most people vanished down the way, but there was some good news today. The fact is they've just got the power back on in the past two hours to a lot of folks in Vantage, but this thing wiped out 59 power poles along Vantage Highway, which means they have to keep that closed off. And of course, with the wind that you mentioned, Hannah, well, things could still get worse. When you see see the planes out, you know it's, it's moving. And, and with this wind like this, you know, it clips. Out near Quincy, Dan Havens is watching smoke billow up into the sky near Vantage. Anytime you've got flames here with the wind, you got to be conscious because we're kind of trapped down there, right? He's staying in Sunland across the river and block from all of this. Meanwhile, the fire has grown to 8,000 acres. Unfortunately, due to the hot, dry conditions, uh, we are seeing more frequent fires on the landscape. Now, on the ground, the DNR is blocking off access to nearby communities. Above, a symphony of aircrafts showcasing an upside to this fire. It's so close to Columbia River, grabbing water is easy. It's an excellent spot for those aircraft to reload their tanks and get on the fire in quicker order. Uh, had that water source been farther away, obviously time becomes a concern. Right now, the driest part of the state, again, relative to normal for this time of year, is on the the east side of the Cascades. As Nick Bond, Washington State climatologist, explains this area is in a bad spot. The wet, cool spring is quickly becoming an afterthought as drought monitors worsen and fire outlook maps turn red. And it's a trend that he's noticed for years. The climate has warmed in Washington State. And oh, what I find kind of distressing is at least the last couple of decades, the summers have been drier than they have been in the past. And that is something that our models that are used um, to forecast what's going to happen with uh, a climate change are indicating is going to be in the um, continue into the future. We pull into our place down there that says extreme fire danger, but uh, I think it pretty much reads that from July on. For now, the concern here is what the Vantage fire does today, especially given we're in a red flag warning day, basically meaning it's windy and the conditions are ripe for growth. We could see fire. I mean, on the other side there, it's standing up pretty high. So it's it's there's it's burning something. I don't know what's over there to burn, but it's burning something. And that comment that he made at the end of the story there is pretty relevant because, like I said, the smoke has really tripled in just the last little bit here. And the big thing is, is for most of the day, my photographer Frank and I have been staying out here and you see this thin, white, wispy smoke that's usually after they put a lot of water on it, it's thinning out, it's slowing down. We have now seen large, dark patches, which would seemingly mean that it's hit some new fuel out here. Now, you don't know what exactly is burning out there, but we do know it hasn't hit structures as of now. The big thing is, though, this thing still has the potential to grow. We saw it explode from 5,000 to 8,000 acres, and I know that doesn't make a lot of sense to folks in acres, right? That's 12 and a half square miles. It's about a tenth of the city of Seattle when you think about the size of the footprint of Seattle. So imagine a tenth of Seattle burned or scorched. That's what you got out here right along the Columbia River, and it's still burning at this hour. We're live near Quincy. Matthew Smith, 
Fox 13 News. Yeah, Matthew, thank you for that perspective out there. So we now turn to our weather experts, Aaron Mayoski, tracking the conditions we are expecting over the next seven days. But first, we want to head to Chief Meteorologist Lisa Villegas. So Lisa, are conditions for fire crews going to improve over the next few hours? So not in the next couple of hours here, unfortunately, Hannah, but in the next 24 hours, yes. And the only reason I'm saying that is, one, we're watching out for those high wind speeds. We still have this red flag warning in place, meaning low humidity. It's very dry out there and as those wind speeds continue to crank up at this hour that is not looking good along with the heat I mean 95 degrees right now we talked about 8,000 acres burn temperatures continuing in those mid 90s for at least the next couple of hours along with those wind speeds and that will continue later on tonight so as we fast forward tonight you can see those gusts exceeding 30 miles an hour for portions of the area at times so that's going to be very hard for our fire crews right now as we fast forward tomorrow we finally see a little improvement with those wind speeds however Ever. It is still very dry and it's still going to be very hot. Now, when it comes to the smoke, as those wind speeds continue out of the west, tracking eastward, all that smoke is going to blow away from western Washington. So, as we expand out, we're not going to see any impacts from that fire for us. In fact, as we take a look at what we're seeing right now when it comes to western Washington, I want to bring in Aaron Mayoski. And, Aaron, we were talking about it's not as bad here for our conditions when it comes to that fire risk. Yeah, for sure, especially west of the Cascades, we're seeing much improvement. Dry tender ground still. We do have a shot for rain coming our way. Just a small shot, but light wind speeds as we go into the evening hours. Tomorrow we could pick up a little breezy conditions, but really fairly calm even over towards uh, Wenatchee. We're seeing 13 miles an hour. As we look at conditions across Puget Sound, really nice. We're seeing the sun finally pop through. We had a good amount of cloud cover this morning and it actually felt really nice to smell and feel that cool, crisp marine air that pushed in. 75 degrees is where we're out. Winds are out of the west at nine miles an hour and we're able to make out just uh, the Olympics and Bainbridge Island out there. We have a small slight haze, but otherwise mostly sunny skies except for a few clouds through the islands and our temperatures are just kind of hanging out in the mid 70s for the Seattle area. 79 is actually an average seasonal high for this time of year, so feels really cool as that high pressure moves out the cool air coming in. That's what's going to keep us nice and cool throughout the rest of the week into the 70s. If you're thinking about that Sounders FC Dallas match, you can catch it on Fox 13 plus great conditions. 75 degrees at kickoff tonight at 7 p.m. We get a little cloud cover rolling in afterwards, but other than that, conditions are really fairly simple this week in the mid to upper 70s, and then we start to heat up for the weekend. We'll have that extended forecast and team coverage coming your way in a bit.